It was a close decision and a really tough choice which common room to put in the first place as the most inviting, atmospheric and good-looking in a Hogwarts Legacy game. At the same time, the fourth place appeared to be an almost obvious pick to me. Slytherin was my first choice house for the playthrough and I hate to admit it, but its common room goes into the fourth place. Slytherin's common room has this absolutely stylish snake which requires password and then Slytherin opens the door. After waking up next morning, you meet three fellow Slytherins. One of them is Sebastian Salo, and he is, as expected, one of the coolest plot characters in the game. Though you're meeting Salo no matter which house you choose, and that's why this point cannot go to Slytherin, sorry. Besides Sebastian, you also meet a Slytherin girl who claims to fly in a broom better than anybody else at school, and she promises to give you a good lesson. The third Slytherin student you meet on your first day is a slight charming nod to the seven books experts. His name is Ominous Gaunt, and he is a descendant of an ancient family, the ancient family actually, related to Salazar Slytherin himself, and as you may assume, to Lord Voldemort as well. The Slytherin common room in general corresponds to the book's description, but I expected much more, I wanted to see the spirit. It doesn't have any of those vibes of leaning to dark arts or having this great history behind. I mean, compared to the other common rooms, it looks just insipid. We have a humble try to add creativity into the room's atmosphere. I mean, the situation when several students at the window hope to see more people in the waters of the Great Lake. But to no luck, so it's basically just a huge aquarium in a grey grim room. The ceiling seems way too high for a dungeon and maybe it's personal, but I can only imagine how wet and chilly these rooms must be. I took walks through these round greenish corridors several times and I stopped by in every dorm trying to find anything fun or unusual, nothing but a stuffed niffler that would give me a feeling of a place that I would call home or at least where I want to spend some time. There are several types of objects that you can interact with in the common room. First of all, it's fruit and some other food on the plates to grab a bite. But the food is generic, it's the same in all the rooms and other locations, as well as the globes. What is it about those globes, by the way, they actually have them in almost every location I have visited. I mean, Hogwarts administration just really cares about geography or something. You can also start the piano melody, but that's pretty much it in Slytherin Common Room. The tiny creative element that I've spotted and liked is this nice touch about signs with the years at the dorm doors. Like first year, second year, third year dorm and so on. But apparently it's not Slytherin exclusive, other houses have have them too. Third position goes for Ravenclaw. It's a common room that I absolutely adored after the preview room tour. And the cool thing, it looks just exactly as I have imagined. The air element is all over the place. Blue and white colors of decorations, super cool wall almost completely of glass. This makes you feel as if you were in a mountain summit where you can breathe in fresh air and open your mind to every possible creative idea. The common area has two levels and and an exit to what I think is a terrace on the top to observe stars and planets, but it's still closed. The second level here on the round roof looks just fantastic, like a true sorcerer's laboratory or a fancy university conference hall. From the common rooms you can make your way to the dorms. Unlike Slytherin or Hufflepuff system, here the dorms are not surrounding the common room in circles. The Ravenclaw house has more complex geometry, with multiple stairs and passageways inside the house tower. In the common area you encounter knights, an interesting detail, they are blocking you the way and that's really intriguing. On our first day we meet, as everywhere else, three students of this house. Everett is trying to lighten the first day tension by throwing dung bombs onto his colleagues. Duh, but whatever. Ravenclaw may have a specific sense of humor. Emma shares his enthusiasm about astronomy. Samantha just makes a pointless small talk with us. And the whole impression after meeting the Ravenclaw students is blur, they are like cardboard cutouts. The overall feeling about Ravenclaw seems a little disappointing, as if the house plot and characters were pushed away and forgotten by the developers. The room does look beautifully painted and bright, but it seems like it's an empty cover with no story behind behind it. The second position in my rating goes to the Hufflepuff common room, but remember, this was a really tough call. The Hufflepuff common room impressed me. It gives very warm, inviting vibes and it completely reflects the house
Hubble's spirit. Every detail here is made with love and it's easy to see. The Hufflepuff common room has never been described in the books. That is why it's a completely fresh experience and I think it's a success. The developers created a really unusual and stylish way to enter the room to begin with. Professor Weasley tells that you have to knock a specific barrel at the entrance in the rhythm of the words Helga Hufflepuff. So it goes knock, 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 knock. I mean, it's simple and it's funny and you remember this. Like you will remember other small fun elements, for example, candy that you find in your dorm and after eating it, it brings you up in the air, levitated for several seconds. Another great thing is this atmosphere of a family house living room with lots of plants and cozy chairs. I love the warm color gamma chosen for decoration and interior elements, very friendly to the eyes and relaxing. The common room is spacious, high and has windows in the ceiling that provide warm natural light. Another significant and true Hufflepuff detail that you encounter on your first day in the common room are the nice fellow students that take care of animals and help each other. We meet Ethel Plumley, for example, who at the first sight gives a little bit awkward impression, but then we get to know that he's helping a first-year student get his cat from top of the cupboard and then he's trying to take the cat from under a sofa, so he seems quite a nice guy. We also meet a Hufflepuff girl who seems preoccupied with her uncle's problems and yet another Hufflepuff student who holds a novel and explains that she doesn't know whose bird it is, but it's Hufflepuff, so animals would always find care and protection here. These short sketches demonstrate the true Hufflepuff traits – loyalty to friends and family and love for every living thing. And by the way, from what I see so far, only your house's room is visible and available. The other rooms and corresponding flu network stations don't even appear on the Hogwarts map. So you can only visit and check out the common room if you belong to the house. As I understand, in this relation the developers stick to the original lore, where the secrets of entering the common room was kept among the students of a certain house only. And now proceeding to the winner of my rating, which is the Gryffindor House common room. Frankly, the Hufflepuff's room was as warm and inviting as the Gryffindor's, but sorry, Gryffindor just really feels like home where my heart is. And it is just exactly as a student's campus should be. Loud, fun warm, a little overcrowded and so very familiar. The fat lady's portrait welcomes you with a smile. The wooden beds in the dorm look very solid, by the way. After leaving the dorm, you immediately find yourself on a spiral staircase, obviously because the Gryffindor house is based in a tower. The stairs lead to a balcony overview in the common area. Don't miss it, go there and take a look at this cheerful atmosphere in the Gryffindor common room. For example, a girl who just casually performs flip on the mantelpiece and the others obviously loudly support her little show. Later on, this girl tells us that she had once climbed to the top of the Gryffindor Tower from the outside. Daring and recklessness it is. Welcome to Gryffindor. You can spot a lot of other small details, like for example, a deck of magical cards flying around in the room, or hints on some beverages the students brew themselves. I mean, this is really how the student's life is supposed to be, having fun, laughing, breaking the limits, ignoring the rules. And in addition to the casual, relaxed atmosphere, the history and various achievements of many generations of Gryffindors are well respected here too. We see goblets, prizes, portraits, but they do not suppress, they just make you proud to be here, to be a part of something huge and great. Colors, decorations, small details – all together make the Gryffindor common room look pretty much perfect. Same as in the other houses, you meet three Gryffindors before proceeding to Professor Weasley. One of them, Gareth Weasley, is Professor Weasley's nephew, who slightly complains about his aunt to be over-controlling him. Though I don't blame her for keeping an eye on him, that's another Weasley boy. And if you want to know how to make your first visit to Hogsmeade most fun and useful, check out my video, the link is on your screen now. Thank you for your attention, see you at Hogwarts! Thanks.